Hello, hi, everyone. My name is Byung Eun Park. I am in charge of multimedia framework at Samsung Electronics. Uh, this is Young Eun Park. Uh, he is working for multimedia system at Samsung Research and in charge of next generation video codec. Today, we will talk about three subjects. Firstly, the things you need to prepare for low latency live streaming service. Secondly, the items that you have to prepare for AK streaming service. Lastly, AI codec that can service AK contents with 4K bandwidth. The first topic is low latency live streaming. I will start with the latency. The latency is the time required to deliver a live content from a field to TV viewers. Let's think about if your neighbor is watching a broadcasted soccer game, you may realize the scoring with your neighbor's sound 30 second earlier. It's the latency between the live source, the viewer. What if the content was not a soccer game, but an interactive content, something like a live quiz show? These services, such as video call, uh, game streaming, and break news, are uh, greatly affected by latency. And we are pouring our efforts into reducing latency. This shows the actual latency data of live streaming providers in Super this year. As you can see from this graph, the delay range is from 28 seconds uh, to 46 seconds at most. However, our efforts have finally showed a great result. We have achieved reducing latency under three seconds, and we, are, we can reduce it under half a second too. It's amazing. Before talking our, about work, we should learn about the reason of why delivering the contents is like, taking such a long time. As you can see the, from this slide, each step takes a large amount of time. This year, we improved these five points, encoding, packaging, CDN, platform, and latest standards. Additionally, I will introduce Samsung co-work companies together. If you have any questions in this session, please leave them anytime on this link. I will answer at once later on this link. To do that, please can describe code or access SLI do and then type hashtag streaming tech on SDC. Okay. So now let's go on to CMAP for low latency. Generally, for live streaming, contents are cut in the length of six seconds for transmission which is called a segment. As you can see from this picture, if a user requests a streaming service when making the third segment, the server will select the completed second segment for streaming. Then the user has no choice but to see the video for the past nine seconds. Furthermore, the longer the segment, the more time for creating is necessary and release the recording for six seconds, encoding and uploading to a server take much longer. Likewise, the time to propagate them to CDN caches or ratchets from the origin will be also longer. The player buffer size also affects delay. The bigger, size, the, bigger the player buffer, the more time is needed to fill it, and it is related to the network condition as well. To resolve these problems, CMAP standards was officially declared last year, which is common format for transmitting data. CMAP can cover various types of streaming protocols and DRMs as well. CMAP chunk is a group of small video samples. There is a big difference from a small segment. A segment has at least one iframe. In case of CMAP chunk, you only have to consider the number of video frames. As I explained before, the larger the segment unit, the longer the, the, longer the delay time may occur. Thanks to CMAP chunk, you can deliver them to the viewers more quickly on making the third segment. 
schema up also has advantages in terms of regard to compatibility. In the previous way, to support uh, various platforms, content provider had to support multiple streaming methods. Schema up never needs them. By using CMAP, content provider can save the cost of encoding, packaging, distribution, and storage. And they can also provide enhanced quality service. Okay. On the left side, there is a live source. Right on top, there is a regular live streaming. And the bottom shows low latency live streaming. Please compare the spending time of encoding, buffering, and propagate between them. Okay. Can you feel the latency? Okay. One more time. You can see the first frame on low latency live streaming, but on regular streaming, it's still buffering. Finally, you can see the first frame on regular live streaming is the latency. Furthermore, dash and LHS and dash size are preferring features for supporting low latency. To summarize, we'll support CMAP, and CMAP chunk is a big feature for low latency live streaming. Lastly, CMAP can also reduce the cost. Now, let's take a look at WebRTC. WebRTC is a standard technology of HTML5 based on peer-to-peer -peer video transmission. WebRTC can make ultra low latency streaming less than one second delay. Currently supporting browsers and platforms are Palos, and Taijun will be supported soon. WebRTC is based on peer-to-peer -peer method, but it still needs servers. In, either, in an ideal case, a connection with the peers, between peers, will be, sh will be shown as, but in most cases, network equipment such as routers or firewalls are involved in the middle. In this situation, WebRTC needs turn servers to find the public IP. Also, it needs turn server in case of losing connections with the peers. Moreover, WebRTC can do P2P-based multicasting. It can extend the multicasting by configuring various types of topologies. However, you may have to approve the expense of computing and networking. For larger scale, you can put MCU device in the middle, but it is also costly. Due to this technical difference, you have to choose between CMAP and WebRTC depending on the service you want. Although the latency of WebRTC is less than CMAP, it can be poor for the scalability and cost. I think you can choose between each of them for the following services. As you know, using these standards can effectively reduce the latency but it may bother service providers who so only want to focus their, on their service. So this year, we worked with partners to make these standards go well on Samsung Smart TV. The partners will be able to give some help to service providers for these standards or server infrastructures. They are our partners who have co-worked with, with us for low latency live streaming this year and verify the low latency live streaming together. Akamai has not only CMAP packaging, but also solutions for distribution and CDN technologies for low latency live streaming. In cooperation with Akamai, live streaming less than three seconds, latency became possible. Wowza and main concept have been verified the CMAP compatibility with Samsung Smart TV and we have successfully streamed them. Phoenix has its own ultra low latency technology based on WebRTC. Please remember ultra low latency. This year, we've worked with Phoenix to verify live streaming 
within 500 millisecond latency based on WebRTC. You can see the collaboration with Akamai and Phoenix in a live demo in our exhibition. Based on this technology, we have developed low latency live stream this year and have co-worked with some partners. We hope to work with more partners. We'll prepare the following standards for lower latency live streaming. We'll also try to apply real-time latency live streaming technology beyond the ultra low latency. Next, let's go over to AK Adaptive Streaming. What do you need in order to stream AK contents? Could you please give me some any words? Anyone? Please? Okay. Oh, thank you. To watch an AK content, consumer can only think that AK contents, a network to deliver the contents on AK TV and an application are necessary. But actually, we need much more than we thought. We can call them as an ecosystem for AK streaming. Today, I will talk about these six things, uh, including packaging and DRM, content providers, and Tizen platform and op 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 application. I hope you will be able to get some information about AK ecosystem and sample cost in this session. As before, please use this link to leave your questions. Okay. First, first thing is about encoding, packaging, and streaming. First thing is about um, streaming, as you know, means a technology that makes you download and play a content over the network at the same time. Adaptive streaming refers a technology that smoothly switches to stream with lower or higher bitrate of the same content depending on the network condition. At, the, at this point, if your video player gets a high bitrate stream at low network speed, buffering may happen. Network condition varies with countries or time, but chancely, the world's average download speed is increasing every year. Therefore, most of the streaming content providers use adaptive streaming to handle it more flexibly. In general, uh, streaming service providers are streaming by configuring the following bitrate. While we launched a new AK streaming service this year, we've gotten a lot of questions about bitrate for AK streaming. Depending on the bitrate, even though the stream has a high resolution, it can be served with a lower quality. That's why it's important to configure a bitrate for AK streaming. As you know, for adaptive streaming, a lot of content providers use Dash and LCS methods. These methods are based on video segmentation. The streams can be organized by various bitrate, and resolutions. It also includes multiple segments divided by a protocols. This approach enables a smooth transition between segment by network conditions. One segment usually has multiple GOPs, GOPs mean global pictures, and the iframe, the front of the segment, is for adaptive streaming. Determine the length of global pictures and the length of a segment is one of the most important points. Because the smaller the length of a GOP, the more iframes are made per segment. This can directly affect picture quality and encoding, encoding efficiency. The length of a segment affects the sensitivity to network conditions. This means the longer the segment can be difficult to switch between streams, even though your network slows down. There is one of the factors that can cause buffering. As I previously explained, we suggest the encoding guidelines as the, as the following. A segment less than three seconds, a gap less than one second, 
uh, one iframe per one go. Like before, we stop for both LHRS and dash method. If people who own LHRS will be also supported. You might think these guidelines bother me. This year, we've also prepared the ecosystem for AK streaming. As I said from the beginning, encoding and packaging are part of the, the ecosystem. We've worked with several encoding and packaging companies to create working uh, streams on Samsung AK TV. For example, Harmonic, Bimovin, and Atom cooperated together with us. These partners generously provide these resources to support AK streaming. I'd like to take, take this opportunity to thank them. We have worked with these partners to verify compatibility through various combinations of streaming formats such as multi audio and subtitles. If you think that the guidelines seem complicated, then working with them may be an option. Also, even if, even if you can create such AK content, the role of the content provider to serve them is huge. I'd like to introduce companies that have contributed to the spread of AK content by believing the potential of AK TV growth and the success of 4K streaming. Chile is the content provider currently serviced in Europe, providing various contents such as movies and documentaries. They are going to provide AK documentary contents on the streaming. We go go also serves movie contents. They will provide playable AK content on Samsung AK TV on the streaming. The Explorers is the global content provider that aims to show beautiful scenes from all over the world with Samsung AK TV. Especially, they came here today to talk about their experience of launching AK streaming service on Samsung AK TV. Is Daniel? Okay. Uh, no. uh, hi everyone, so I'm Jean-Marc Denoual uh, from Explorer. I joined Explorer a few months ago um, to, to help them to grow. Uh, we are a French company based in Paris, but we, as uh, explained before, we, we aim at uh, exploring the world. So a um, few, maybe a few minutes to, to explain to you who we are, what we are aiming at, and uh, uh, what we plan to do. And, and after that, I, I will jump to, uh, to the experience we, we have uh, uh, deployed with the Samsung team, especially on the, on the AK experience. So um, um, the explorers, what we are doing, uh, we are exploring the world, so we are a producer uh, company. We are, we are uh, filming, producing, post-producing all the content that we uh, are owning uh, for years now. Uh, and uh, we own the right worldwide, so we are ready to deploy our service uh, in uh, several languages and uh, worldwide soon. Uh, but we are also, and mainly I would say, uh, I would jump, uh, no, I go too fast. Um, we are mainly a contributive uh, platform. That's to say that we are allow all the users in the world to participate to the Earth inventory. Uh, so they can uh, put their video and photo in, in, uh, in the, into the platform. And we are uh, completing uh, the, 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 the video and the photo by the, the, the films that are made by the professional that uh, the team uh, is. So we have uh, already produced more than uh, 1,000 hours of 8K because we are producing in 8K for, for years now. Uh, 20 films are already edited and will be launched in uh, next uh, week uh, from France. So uh, I, I, go, uh, I go deeper in, in, in details in, in this uh, initiative. Um, and we, are, we will probably be the first SVOD participative um, uh, service. That's to say that 
each, for each dollar that uh, will be uh, paid to uh, the explorers in a SVOD mode, we will, be, uh, we will uh, donate 5% uh, of our revenue to a foundation to, uh, of course, to participate and to, uh, to, uh, um, to, participate and to help uh, uh, programs uh, dedicated to, to uh, the preservation of animals. We plan um, uh, for the next uh, months and the months coming and years coming to, um, to uh, run one expedition uh, per month, uh, coming in uh, November. Uh, and of course, to deploy our service uh, in, uh, um, I would say, worldwide. What we have done with uh, Samsung, so um, the experience that we have uh, uh, built with uh, Samsung is very interesting. I would say from my background, I deployed many, many things uh, with the Samsung team uh, uh, in France and internationally, but uh, the point is that uh, when we started to discuss to deploy our service on, on the Tizen uh, TV, it was this summer, uh, two, uh, three months ago, and the uh, 8K player on Tizen doesn't, didn't exist. So, of course, we deployed and developed the, the, the service uh, very uh, quickly. So the service allows you to uh, uh, showcase your photo, to share with your friends, your video, and, and so on, but also to uh, subscribe, if you want, to the SVOD services, uh, and it, uh, it will be uh, served and streamed in 8K uh, starting uh, next week. And it's very important to, 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 to stream in 8K uh, and, and to deal with Samsung because, uh, as you probably know, there, there are only one uh, TV provider and TV uh, manufacturers to, to be able to stream and to have the TV set uh, compatible with 8K in a streaming mode. So what we have planned to do with the French team of Samsung, which is uh, quite new, uh, I, I suppose, is that um, because we, we wanted to, to um, uh, it's quite frustrating for the user to, to, to buy a, a great TV set in 8K, uh, coming back home and uh, just to, to plug uh, the, the Wi-Fi connection and to have no 8K content uh, compatible and ready to, to, to stream. So what we, we have uh, closed in terms of deals is that for uh, every screen, uh, 8K, uh, TV 8K screen uh, sold in France uh, starting from uh, uh, 7th of, uh, November, 7th of November, um, we will uh, grant the, the user for uh, free services and, and uh, free SVOD services, the Explorer Plus. That allows the user without asking any question, without any credit card, I would say, to put their credit card uh, into the TV set uh, to um, show and to stream uh, directly AK content. It was uh, uh, announced uh, in uh, Berlin, uh, so at, uh, during the IFA, which is uh, um, equivalent to a CES in the US, but in Europe. Uh, and it will be launched uh, next year and announced from Paris, because I, our French president said that there is uh, no uh, best place to launch uh, this kind of service. Uh, Paris is very, uh, the, 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 the best place to do that. Um, so we are already in France, so uh, next week we will announce that and launch the product. We are uh, absolutely ready technically with the Samsung uh, uh, team and uh, from the Explorer point of view and uh, we are absolutely and we want and we aim at expand our partnership uh, in the coming months and to deploy this kind of uh, I would say uh, deals to um, I would say educate people to receive and to, uh, to, have, to see the difference between uh, 4K and 8K uh, content. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you. Thanks, the, thanks to the explorers for their efforts to launch the 8K stream service. You can experience the contents of them with Samsung AK TV in our exhibition booth. Samsung is participating in the AK Association to spread the AK ecosystem and popularize AK contents. Also, if you contact Samsung Service team, 
you are ready to make an effort to support streaming service on AKTV. We are looking forward to contacting to the service biz team from many shippies and the packaging, packaging companies to contribute it to the AKC ecosystem. Now, it's uh, my last top topic, Tizen TV platform. This year, we added two new web APIs for AK streaming. The first API is that user can check whether the TV you are running your app can play on AK content or not. The other API is for setting the maximum resolution of an adapted content. The reason of using this API is that, as you know, resolution entry aren't mandatory in many past. Details of these two APIs will be posted on Samsung Developer Forum. Here is the web API that was used for traditional pocket playback. One is the API to check whether UHD panel is supported. The other is the API that sets 4K mode with AV play. Between them, the API for 4K mode will be deprecated. Here is the API to check to support an AK screen, which is an extension of the API to, to check to have a 4K mode, 4K screen actually. We provide a new property to reflect the API to set 4K mode. If you set the maximum resolution of a stream instead of, of that number, it should work well, but this API is optional. If the manifest of a stream has resolution items, then there is no need to call this API. Finally, you can upgrade your AK TV by downloading Tizen OS for AK streaming from Samsung.com now. Okay, thank you for your attention. Young Park will introduce the last topic, AI ScaleNet. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Young Ho Park, uh, working at Samsung Research in Seoul. Uh, my interesting research topic is artificial intelligence for image and video processing, such as compression, super resolution, and image enhancement. So today, uh, I'm gonna tell you about image processing technology powered by AI. Uh, session title is AI Scalelet Technology for Better Streaming. Everybody knows nowadays is the era of artificial intelligence. I think no one denies it. However, until now, the main AI research subject was recognition, classification, or recommendation problems. Uh, Samsung Bixby or object classification in image are representative examples. Meanwhile, uh, AI begins to extend its application to various fields recently, and image enhancement is one of them. You have just listened to a kind of tutorials uh, in terms of AK production and streaming from byung -hun. As he explained, Samsung is trying to its best to deliver AK contents to consumer directly to provide extreme realism experience. So, uh, on top of these backgrounds, I will introduce now our new technology called ScaleNet, which enables AK content delivery through 4K bandwidth, which are all powered by AI neural network technology. In addition, uh, it, it is sure that ScaleNet provides better streaming service experience, even in lower resolution as well. Basically, ScaleNet is a neural network for intelligent image and video processing. Uh, it provides dramatic visual quality improvements compared to conventional image and video processing. Uh, this picture uh, describes the scale-led ar architecture. Input image is scaled down by called scale-led down, and then legacy traditional image video processing, such as compression or transmission, and then 
the scaling up called by scale that up up to original resolution. Here, let's, let's see the main benefits of Scalelet. Basically, Scalelet upgrades your video streaming quality to the next level, especially during prime time when the network bandwidth is very hungry. For example, in US, average network bandwidth is 22.6 megabps, but in prime time, at peak time, it drops to 3.8 megabps. It's about from 6 to 9 p.m. This absolutely causes your OTT service visual quality lower than you expected, especially in large screen. This picture describes more details of scale benefits in terms of adaptive streaming solution. Left is legacy streaming, the right is AI scaled adaptive st streaming. If you get B-Stream, for example, 1080p resolution with scaled, you can guarantee 4K resolution rather than legacy 1080p visual quality. Uh, the lower or the upper B-Stream radars are still all the same. So Scalelet can provide a better adaptive streaming solution at all bitrate rather. One more thing is Scalelet supports backward compatibility. In CP side, who provide streaming solution does not need to replace legacy encoding system. The only thing they have to do is just to put scale it down prior to legacy encoder by the replacement of legacy scaler. And in device side, you can enjoy your OTT video as the same as before, even though your device doesn't have a scale it. Uh, it means there is no damage, no harm. It supports backward compatibility. Meanwhile, if you have a scale it up in your device, you can enjoy one more level of visual quality video as I explained in previous slide. Let's move on our topic to a little more technical things. The motivation of Scaled is from autoencoder, which is actually an old concept proposed at late 80s. Basically, autoencoder is a neural network that runs to copy its input to its output. It means that the network is trained as the output is trying to identical to input. It is proposed for dimension narrative reduction at first time, but currently it is more popular for uh, one of generative models, models such as variational autoencoder. Actually, Scalelet relies on autoencoder manifold learning concept. <coughs> okay, if you already know where about AI and image processing, I think you are used to super resolution terms as well. Let's see what's the difference between Scalelet and super resolution here. Uh, Scalelet is based on down and up architecture having bottleneck as like autoencoder. Meanwhile, super resolution only has up architecture. And so super resolution needs to be deeper network to have a memorization effects to recover texture. Meanwhile, scalelet doesn't rely on memorization effects because scalelet up can recover pixels with primary pictures embedded in scaled down image. Therefore, scaled up can be designed by rel relatively shallow network. I think this is an uh, important point to embed uh, these algorithm on consumer device. Okay, I will explain more details about the meaning of the picture embedded uh, from now on. 
Uh, here are two interesting papers which prove that why autoencoders show better quality than super resolution or legacy scaler. The first paper is uh, task aware image downscaling from Professor Lee of Seoul National University. It was submitted to ECCB at last year. Uh, they named the down network as TAD and task aware downscaling and the upscaling as a TAU, task aware upscaling. Especially in this paper, they show that autoencoder embeds hidden information into downscaled image for better upscaling. And they do experiments that there is a visual quality trade-off between downscaled image and upscaled image. In other words, when the more information is embedded into downscaled image, the better for, for upscaled image, but the worse for downscaled image quality. Uh, or more, the more information is embedded in downscaled image, the better the upscaled image, but the worse downscaled image. It means the hidden information is, uh, and, and in this paper, in this paper, the hidden information is parameterized as lambda in this paper. It shows the trade-off. Uh, this result shows that the performance comparison between super resolution and autoencoder. VDSR and EDSR plus is one of the best super resolution algorithm. However, you can see autoencoder. I'm not sure whether you can see the difference, but uh, you can see the autoencoder shows better quality than the best super resolution algorithm. Okay. This compares three different results by cubic and super resolution and autoencoder. This is a handcrafted crafted signal processing method, for, and these two are neural network. And you can see autoencoder shows the best quality over all uh, resizing ratio. This is, this is a resizing ratio. And this is the same. This is a bicubic result. This is a, sup this is a super resolution result. And this is autoencoder result. The title of the second paper is Running a Convolutional Neural Network for Image Compact Resolution, which is proposed on image pr processing transaction in this year. Lee and his team named the down network as a compact resolution and up network as a super resolution. The right picture depicts the main framework of their autoencoder structure. This is a downscaling and this is upscaling. Now this is their result and it is similar with the previous paper conclusion. The A is the original image and B is cropped from original image. And C is the bicubic down image, and D is autoencoder down image. And E is the super resolution result, and F is the autoencoder auto result. Uh, it, is, it is easily shown that autoencoder shows a better visual quality. Autoencoder shows a better visual quality than super resolution. It's more identical to original image. And now I will show you some simple experimental result of our scalelet and bicubic uh, at resolution 1080p and 720p. You can see AK, AK or other demonstration in exhibition booths as well. Legacy is bicubic down and bicubic up. The original image is 1080p. And uh, 
scale it down and scale it up. We will compare these two. This is the bicubic. This is AI streaming. This is bicubic, scale it. Bicubic, scale it. And this is bicubic, and this scale it, bicubic. Scale it, scale it shows uh, the very detailed texture recovery. <coughs> and this is, uh, you can see the eyes. And this is for 720p resolution result. This is a bicubic. This is a scale -led. This is a bicubic. This is a scale -led. This is a bicubic. This is a scale -led. OK, that's it. Uh, I think. Parallel streaming solution, including AK contents powered by AI, is already right next to you with Samsung and all your efforts. Thank you all very much for your careful listening. Thank you.